My time has come. It is my turn to test out Meta's new AR prototype called Orion that launched at Connect back in September. This is Orion, the most advanced glasses the world has ever seen. I am incredibly skeptical of AR glasses because first and foremost, they look ridiculous historically. Two, also historically, the field of view on them has been so limited that what you're actually seeing in front of you is like, you know, this tiny little pocket and it just makes it hard to use and not exactly an experience that I welcome, nor one that is helpful in any way. Okay, don't be alarmed, but there's a good friend behind me. But Meta has proven that they are like really locked into this glasses idea and they're putting in a lot of research, time, money, and they've already seen success with the Ray-Bans, which in no way are AR, but prove that there is a market for tech being put into a different sort of wearable. And I think I'm here. Much like the other demos of Orion that I have seen, my demo was done in a very neutrally lit room. And the first step was calibrating the glasses and getting to know the controls. Can I make it bigger? Am I supposed to be looking at those little dots? Oh, this one. And then where's like the volume? The inputs for Orion use your eyes as the cursor, tracked through a system of small cameras placed around the frame of the glasses, and your hand motions for scrolling and selecting, done via a Whoop-esque EMG bracelet that measures the electrical impulses in your wrist muscles when they contract. And then I can hey, scroll. Look, yeah, you can screen. scroll if you look. Oh, so closer is like this, yeah, further is like this. Okay. Out. There's also a computing puck that I wasn't able to film, but that was connected to a MacBook Pro and plugged into power. After the setup was complete and I was more comfortable with the system, I was walked through a series of demos to get to know more about Orion's abilities. I wasn't able to record what I was seeing through Orion, but Meta provided me these pre-recorded samples to show you. And the only real difference between what I saw and what's providing these samples is that the colors of the AR content in real life wasn't quite as punchy as you see here. The colors were just a bit more muted and not quite as crisp. And of course, you're not getting like the three-dimensionality that I was seeing either. Okay, so for the demos, the folks at Meta had me prompt an AI-generated image to show off the Glasses AI integration. Imagine a laptop floating in a lake. I was put on a hands-free call with someone to show what that looks and sounds like. Hey, how, how is your day going? I played a game called Stargazer to test head tracking. I opened up three windows to see how wide the field of view was. And of course, they made me look at a bunch of ingredients and ask for recipe because AI. Give me a smoothie recipe. But there was one feature that I naturally kept remarking on and being impressed by. The eye tracking's real good. That's pretty snappy. More on that in a moment. First, a little behind the scenes look at how this channel operates and a message from this video sponsor, Notion. For the last few months, when people have asked me about publishing schedules or how I think of my ideas, I've given answers like this. It's a bit of organized chaos. I have my content planned out for like the next four weeks. And then after that, it's like, well, I'll see what hits me. The, the office is a mess, but I know where everything is. Let's go. It's not great, folks. So about a month ago, I took a solid two hours and I just got organized on Notion. So if you don't know, Notion is a productivity tool that combines documents, notes, tasks, and projects all into one place. It is also historically a tool that I would avoid because I have this sort of chip on my shoulder about my brain being organized enough, but the problem with everything being in your brain is that only you can see it, and as much as I hate to admit this next part, things get lost up there. First, I put all of my long-term and short-term goals in one place. Then I created a page for all of my ideas. And lastly, I planned out the entirety of January. Yeah, looking at this calendar of January does feel good and knowing what I have coming up without, I don't know, having that feeling of, okay, I have to think of the next day, I have to think of the next idea all the time has been, Real good for me. The other cool part about Notion is the product's AI integration called Notion AI that can find what you need across multiple apps like Slack or Google Drive and help with a variety of tasks right inside your Notion workspace. And you can access it by simply clicking the Notion AI icon. And just like that, you can get to searching documents, asking questions, or being briefed on projects. My favorite use of Notion AI and of most AI tools is its ability to summarize PDFs. For example, with this video, I had many long research papers that I simply uploaded to Notion AI and let it summarize for me. And then I would know instantly if this research paper was worth me reading the entire thing or if I should skip it entirely. 
And a side note, I love these like thinking animations that Notion AI has, so shout out to the creative team. These look great. Notion AI only surfaces info from places that you have access to, and Notion will never use your data for AI training purposes. You can get started with Notion for free and unlock the new AI features for only $10 a month by using the link down in my bio. Thank you, Notion, for sponsoring this video, but more importantly, for actually getting this mess of a channel organized. Um, the eye tracking's real good. I've had positive experiences with Meta hardware and eye tracking, for example, with Quest 3. So I knew that with Orion, it was gonna be good, but I was surprised when it was great. And I wanna stress that the room I was in was very neutrally lit. There were no direct lights that could cause reflections or interference, but it all just worked really well. So well that I stopped thinking about it altogether. I was also able to stop thinking about my hand motions once I had the commands committed to memory. And because these are all sensed via the bracelet, your hand doesn't have to be in your line of sight. The only downside is that the bracelet you wear has to sit pretty tight. And so by the end of my session, it was uncomfortable to be wearing. You can see the marks that it left here. And then there were two more things that I noticed during my demo. First, the POV is very impressive at 70 degrees. This is one of those things that's like hard to show you and hard to convey. You just kind of have to experience it for yourself. But pretty much my entire field of view was filled with the AR content. It was only on the edges that it began to get cut off. And you can actually see how it gets cut off here in Meta's demo video. And this new point of view is only possible because Meta is using a new material, silicon carbide. That's what allows the like really steep index of refraction. I see. And so that's what like blows out a large uh, field of view. That was really the primary thing that the team wanted to sell first. And then the last thing that I noticed, I actually didn't pick up on until I got home and was watching this footage back. See what happens here. No, you have to be. You have to be. They're gonna. And then again here. Oh, it is. Yeah. And also here. I'm actually looking at the people talking to me. This is gonna sound funny, but with most VR and AR headset demos, when you put the headset on, you pretty much leave the physical world and enter this like virtual one. And therefore looking at people when they're talking to you is simply not something that feels natural, both for you or the person you're talking to. But with these AR glasses, which again, it's AR, not VR, I didn't feel strange looking at people. And I think that's for a few reasons. First, I wasn't tethered to anything, so my head had its full range of motion. Second, the glasses look a bit cartoonish, but they don't look too strange. It is a bezel. <laughs> it's an eye bezel. And lastly, there's barely a tint happening, so it's easy to forget that you're looking through glass at all. I also didn't get the back of brain headache that I usually get when I'm using VR headsets or AR headsets that don't have great head tracking. And in my 30 minutes of use, the glasses never really felt heavy, but that's not a terribly long time, so jury's still out on comfort. I'm, I definitely have like some nice lines on my face. <laughs> and just like that, my demo of Orion was over. Okay, just got out of the demo, and honestly, I walked in there very skeptical of AR glasses, and I'm walking out thinking, Maybe this could be a part of our future, but I'm still struggling to figure out how. And then I'm like, how much is this going to cost? It's going to be really expensive. And then to do what? Like sit at a cafe and play Pong? I... And you definitely have to try it to understand that it's cool and you like it. So how do you get enough people to try this thing? Especially for Meta that doesn't have stores. So when AR glasses finally arrive for the masses, what features do you want to see built in? I asked some folks on Patreon this, they said face filters, maybe some sort of like stargazing app. And then this one was my favorite from Hank. He said an iFixit guide integration, which would be amazing. I would love, I, I would love that. iFixit, please. I'm Becca, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you and everyone you love as well. Happy holidays, I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.